get us started, our, our introductory activity is we'll move into breakout rooms in just a couple of minutes. Um, but what we'll do when we're in the rooms is that you will all introduce yourselves to each other. You'll share the object that you selected, talk about why you selected it, and then how you might use it in your classroom. If you have time, <laughs> we'll ask you to also try to select as the group to select one object that you think would work really well in all of your classrooms. So we'll do this for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and have time to share out with the larger group. Everybody's been assigned to a room. And so we're going to be uh, going into breakout rooms. Uh, your facilitator will be a member of uh, the Mac staff or one of the session facilitators. So if you're ready, here we go. So if we are all back now, what I'd like to ask is for one spokesperson from each group to share out. So who would like to speak for the first group? I'll go. My name is Alshon Johnson. I um, teach at Glenn High School. I teach world geography and I just took over our ethnic studies course, which is called American Experience. Um, we had a teacher leave from the school and so I just took over it last month. Um, so I don't have much, many resources. Uh, the, um, <clears throat> the one I selected was the Yuri uh, Kochiyama, um, which it was the tile that's next to Dolores Huerta. Um, I can't, I don't know. It says uh, rehire the waiters immediately. Um, I don't know why this one stuck out to me. Um, perhaps I think it was just what's going on now um, in the Asian community. And we re most recently had uh, the mass shootings there in Atlanta. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't know much about Yuri, but looking into and investigating, um, I realized that she, or I saw that she shared the same uh, birthday as Malcolm X and they were activists together. And she was there um, when he was assassinated as well. So I thought this this was pretty cool because it showed uh, cross culture interconnectedness and solidarity within the communities, and especially what's going on now and over the summer with you have all the Black Lives Matter protests, and then now we have uh, you know Asian hate crimes that are going on since uh, COVID nineteen. So how I would use this is uh, I thought a good strategy or activity for students would be uh, character corners which I'd put uh, four different activists in, in each corner of the room, uh, Yuri, Malcolm X, and so forth, and have them investigate um, these characters and then ask the characters questions. So if I were to meet Yuri, what questions would I ask her? So I thought this would be a good, good one to use. Great, thank you. So um, I could share the screen, but I think it's really nice to see everyone's faces. So I'll just put in the chat which row, which tile to make sure everyone can see it. Um, so how about someone from group number two? Or just any spokesperson from another group? People may not know what group they were in. I'll go. Um, my name is Whitney Shumate. I'm the humanities instructional coach at Bowie High School. So I work primarily with our um, English and social studies teachers um, and creating some school-wide content as well. And um, the piece, the artifact that I discussed was the, um, the lithograph Super Buddha Head. Um, I found it really interesting, um, particularly in, in the way that I've interacted with kids and, and kind of uh, what sparks their interest um, in identity discussion. And it's, it's kind of a, a really interesting entry point to have them um, investigate the way um, different identities are represented in pop culture. Um, and I find that, that that kids are already kind of naturally engaged in that conversation and are are interested in that. And so that was what drew me to that image. And I thought it would had a lot of potential for sparking discussion with kids. That's so great. Thank you. I'm already learning so much just from how people are talking about their objects. Um, how about people from FUTA's group? Um, I can share out. Um, so my name is uh, Bethany. I uh, teach juniors at um, English 
at early, Northeast Early College High. Um, I am a first year teacher, so thanks for letting me come to this workshop. Uh, I chose, uh, I actually had two that I really liked. There was the Born Near Troy, Alabama, and then the Colin Kaepernick um, magazine cover. Um, so I had a conversation with my students recently, and they're really feeling like the collective traumas going on in all these situations um, from protesting and COVID and here in Texas with the winter storms. And they were feeling kind of helpless, like, what can I do to make a difference in the world? Um, so I thought these would be really wonderful conversation starters um, that you can just like do a nonviolent action and then bring us into what we're working on now, which are protest poems. So it's like, let's get that stuff out. Let's put it on paper. Um, what change do you want to see in the world? Um, and just write it out. And it's been really good for them. They've enjoyed it. Um, they're having fun with it and they're feeling like relieved of a little bit of that stress. So I would use this to kind of start that conversation. Thank you. I missed the first object that you said. I couldn't, I can't find that in the collection. It's, um, it says born near Troy, Alabama. Which and, row is it? Uh, let me see. It is to the left of the Kaepernick picture. So that's um, one, two, three, fourth row, first tile. Okay, who else would like to share out? Do, I think we had, was it one more group? Well, we had a really great discussion. Um, everybody picked really great images. I don't wanna speak for them. Um, Mine was the Dolores Huerta print because I have that same print signed on my wall. And um, I met Dolores Huerta um, at a conference, an anthropology conference actually. And she gave the best speech and it was, it was her work, you know, like people knew of her work and she's basically, she, that year had been, um, I believe it was the governor's race in, in Georgia. And she has been calling, like calling from California homes and, in Georgia to get people to vote. And she basically said, what are you doing anthropologists? Like, <laughs> what, what are you doing? And um, like to help. And so, and she was 88 years old at the time. And I just appreciated that, it, you know, there, there's something you can do always, right? And um, for printmaking, that's a great one to start. Oftentimes Dolores Huerta is left out of the conversation about the United Farm Workers. So um, we had a great mural, um, that had her Cise Puede saying on it. So it was when I would give tours at the MAC, like remember that people would know Cesar Chavez and not Dolores Huerta. So I made it a point to let people know. Thank you, thank you. Well, so we're gonna have an opportunity to dive in more deeply to all of these objects and to all of these ideas. Did we, did we cover every group? Did someone get to share out from each group? I think Elaine McGinty could share from our group if she oh, was great. with. Sorry, I didn't mean to miss anyone. We wanted more time to talk. Everybody had really interesting ideas. And so um, that was my, my big takeaway. There's a lot of resources available from each other that I was enjoying. Um, I talked about the picture. It's one of the very first ones. It's um, black men working around a giant pillar. And I know the history of that image and it relates very much to Austin and the state capitol. And so, um, I preface this with like, I'm here to get more ideas and I have more questions than I do um, answers about how to present stuff. But I was thinking that you could show that image, ask kids what they observe about it and then give them the context of the image. Um, it's convict labor, many people in there for things like jaywalking, um, for people to build, black people to build the capital um, that was also part of union busting because the union workers, I believe, were charging exorbitant fees and Texas was broke. And so asking kids, what do you see in this image prior to context and how do you think and feel about it? And then what do you think after you get context? 